So my first ever Damascus knife accidentally ends up being the nicest knife I ever made. Gotta say, out of all the knife making accidents I ever had, probably gotta be my favorite one. How's it going guys? I'm back. Fat. That's when you've been gone for a while and you come back, but you're fat. I've been on my honeymoon. Hey, I'm not gonna say what kind of stuff we got up to on a honeymoon, but she, I mean, I'll say, uh, I have a lot of back fat now. I but it's been a good long break, had a nice vacation. Time to get this knife video done, let's do it. By now you guys should all know, I'm a certified not that guy pal. I'm no Alex Steele, I'm like a little baby Alex Steele. Like, I'll work with some Damascus, no problem. I'm not gonna be the guy making the Damascus anytime in the near future, so. I went ahead and I bought a couple of chunks from old JB himself. So here's our temporary stencil, and I gotta say, could definitely use a bit of protein. <laughs> So nothing you haven't seen a million times so far, you cut away the majority of the material with the angle grinder, then you go in with the belt sander and you get the flatter edges. I used to go into the little, little finger nook thing with this uh, double-sided flap disc and smooth it out, but I just kind of realized that you end up doing that when you shape the handle anyways, so. Just think of the minutes I say. It's been, uh, what, two months since my last upload? Could have been two months in, in five minutes. Alrighty, well, it's looking about as good as it could so far. Now it's time to see if I can actually pull off the part I'm most nervous about. I have actually actually never done a bevel this deep on a piece of steel this thin. This will be a very spooky first for me. So about 40 minutes of super careful grinding, dunking, and checking later, it becomes painfully apparent I have never struggled this hard to put a straight bevel on a knife. What the heck is going on? Which is when a terrifying thought pops into my head. What if the game was rigged from the start? What if whatever Chinese baby produced my Amazon Prime Damascus blank did not perfectly flat grind it before they sent it to me? A terrifying thought. So I look down the spine. Boom. Scoliosis. Absolute scoli polioli. I'm left with two options. Either I can restart from the beginning or I can attempt to do the flat grinding while the bevel is pretty much already finished. Basically never works. You always end up with really bad horizontal scuff marks on the on the bevel. But what if? Just think of the time I could save or waste. Let's give it a shot. All right, on to heat treat. I'm actually just gonna have to kind of throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. I don't really know what kind of alloys the Chinese baby was working with, so I'm just gonna hit it with my regular old procedure and hope it works. Alrighty, here's a file test. Here's an unhardened piece. Now, fingers crossed, the hopefully sharpened blade. Seems like we're looking pretty good so far. Alright guys, pretty promising. I still gotta clean it and dunk it in the acid, but I think the temper went pretty good. But now I gotta take care of the bolster. Well, shoot man, you guys are gonna call me crazy, but I'm kinda thinking some brass bolsters would be very cash money. Problem is, I don't have any brass. No brass bars anyways. So I went to Goodwill and I bought this, I guess, antique shot glass. I also bought a stainless steel pot. I don't, I don't know. Hey, I looked it up. Stainless steel's got a melting point about a thousand degrees higher than brass. I say ask for forgiveness, not permission. So let's get this thing cut down. We're gonna melt down some brass, baby. Oh man, guys, I could not be happier with how that turned out. After a little bit of cleanup, here's the end result. Might not be perfect, but it's pretty dang close. So this is gonna be ideal for what we gotta do.
All right, well, it's got a nice deep etch there, but not very smooth, not very even, especially the oxide. It's very, uh, very spotty. Ah, oh, man, what are we gonna do? Probably controversial pro gamer move of the century. We're gonna use a wire wheel to knock all the oxide off the blade, which leaves you with probably the sickest thing I ever seen in my whole life. Silver Damascus. This truly is the shiny Pokemon of Damascus. All right, one of the coolest parts about working with brass is you can actually solder it. This makes certain things a whole lot easier. Get it nice and hot. Doesn't take much. A little more heat just to let the solder drop into the hole a little bit more. So I drill some epoxy holes on the inside of each brass bolster and I drill through the scales and just like that, we're onto the glue up. Those handle scales, by the way, are Gaboon Ebony, which a subscriber sent to me in my PO box in alpha mail. Oh, I'm not saying you should send me cool stuff to my PO box. I'm just saying, I mean, he's like pretty much in the video now. So that's, that's pretty cool if you ask me. Folks, what you're looking at here might be the cleanest glue up in ZNA history. I am snooping hard and I don't see a single gap without epoxy. The bolsters are just perfectly lined up. Even around the pins are perfectly filled. Got a good feeling about this one, guys. Great, big old, big, just big, huge, fat shout out to Mr. Gunter Stormbrown. You know, the uh, the baller to end all ballers for not only purchasing the knife, but also sponsoring the whole entire video. That, my friends, is a pro gamer move, and that also is the end of the video. I don't feel like doing a tutorial for the sheath. That's boring, and I haven't uploaded in two months.